Guys, we've got a brand new hot off the presses college football realignment story on this 4th of July. And it's a very interesting idea. Instead of the Pac-12 trying to poach the Big 12 and vice versa, why not just take the best teams from each of these conference, merge them into one super conference, and then that's how you would get the third super conference behind the SEC super conference and the Big 10 super conference. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. This is a very interesting story. You can see college football realignment news. Notre Dame is on deck. Pac-12, Big 12 could merge. And then the SEC versus Big 10 playoff, with which I think I need an entire separate video for that. I would hate if those two conferences made it exclusive. Horrible for the sport. Absolutely horrible. Let's expand to 12 teams. And let's go that way. You don't want an exclusive playoff between two super conferences. No. Uh, but guys, I took some of the most important parts of this article and we're going to discuss them, especially the Big 12, Pac-12 situation We're in regards to Oregon and Washington that we talked about yesterday. Oregon and Washington possibly not being good enough in terms of the revenue that they generate for the Big 10. Of course, right now, the Big Ten is waiting on Notre Dame. Let's get to this story. Now it's time to consider next steps. Notre Dame is a talking point until it decided it's not. Its ongoing dance with conference membership goes back nearly a century. The Pac-12 is already on record as aggressively pursuing expansion. The Big 12 hasn't revealed a plan. If it has one, it could stay at the 12 ready to go in 2025 or as industry insiders are suggesting, pick off as many Pac-12 schools as is financially wise and possibly send the Pac-12 to the dustbin of history. And we discussed this yesterday about the Pac-12 possibly dissolving completely or basically becoming the Mountain West 2.0 and schools like Washington State and Oregon State and maybe even California, if they can't latch onto the Big Ten, they would get left behind. Nothing happens until Notre Dame decides. We've talked about this several times. Pac-12 presidents and athletic directors met by phone last Friday, but does the Pac-12 have, have any position of strength? Until Notre Dame decides on its future, there probably isn't one. Sources told CBS Sports the Big Ten was done for now. Until the Fighting Irish determine whether they want to attempt to join the conference. To entice Notre Dame to jump into the Big Ten, one source suggested Stanford could be invited as sort of a rivalry partner. The two schools have met 24 times in the last 25 seasons. The only season they did not meet was in 2020, so that is interesting. If the Big Ten really wants Notre Dame, I, I really, guys, I don't think the Big Ten needs Notre Dame at all. No, like the situation is if Notre Dame joins the Big Ten, they're going to be making way more money than they would be as an independent. And if I was the Big Ten and Notre Dame tried to start this weird bidding war that many Notre Dame fans want them to have to where they get benefits, you know, for joining the Big Ten and Notre Dame says, we might go to the SEC, and I was the Big Ten, I would be like, go to the SEC. We're going to call your bluff. We do not think Notre Dame is going to join the SEC. And if they do join the SEC, more power to them. We still have USC. We still have UCLA. We still have more teams from the Pac-12 that want in the conference. If you are the Big Ten, with the addition of USC and UCLA, you're negotiating with all the strength at this point. Your TV contract is already going to be ridiculous. You don't need to entice Notre Dame to join your conference. The reality of the situation is Notre Dame is going to be making multiple times more money if they join the Big Ten than being independent. Now, they're also going to make a lot more if they were to join the SEC, but I don't think they would. I would call their bluff. Notre Dame's not going to create a bidding war, guys. It's not going to happen. Notre Dame has two options as far as the Big Ten is concerned. Either join or don't join. We're not enticing you with Stanford. We're not doing a weird relationship where you get to keep your independent status 
but face the Big Ten like five games a year like Notre Dame currently has with the ACC. That's just my opinion. I don't think the Big Ten needs to do that. They have leverage. The Big Ten has an absurd super conference with the addition of USC and UCLA. So actually, they don't have a super conference yet. I would not call 16 teams a super conference. I think... When you get to 18 teams, you can consider it a super conference and certainly 20 uh, and up. So the Big Ten could stop there or go for 18 or further depending on the SEC's intentions. There is growing sediment that some combination of Clemson, Florida State, and Miami could migrate to the SEC. That assumes any of the three would bring pro rata equal value to the team's Already in the league, that's 80 to 100 million annual in media rights fees. It, it is so funny. You have teams like, and I was just thinking this, you have teams like Vanderbilt in the SEC, but Clemson wouldn't be able to join because they don't bring in enough revenue. It's funny to think, I know they're already in it and you can't just kick them out, but it is funny. It's like, uh, you know, Rutgers being in the Big Ten, but not letting. Uh, Notre Dame, or not letting Oregon join, right? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Uh, breaking the ACC grant of rights might require a significant eight-figure exit fee. Yeah, the S they, that's that crazy contract that Notre that all those SEC have teams have through 2036. Assuming the contract isn't successfully challenged in court, I'm guessing they're going to try and challenge it. I mean, that's a major exit fee. You're basically paying to leave the conference 14 years before your contract is up. Well, I guess it wouldn't be 14 years. It'd be, if it happens in 2024, it would be 12 years. But still, that's a crazy fee to face. However, such a penalty, such a penalty could be financed over a period of years while the new schools reap an additional windfall. So there's a workaround, right? We've been wondering, this is a major Problem, if the ACC teams wanted to join the SEC, they have a major TV agreement through 2036 with the ACC. There's a workaround around that. That can be paid off over multiple years while Clemson makes three more than three times the amount of money they stand to make if they go to the SEC. So there's a workaround and this can be done. That's all we wanted to know and that's the answer that we got. Uh, does that force the Big Ten to take a hard look at the likes of North Carolina and Virginia? Both were on the then-commissioner Jim Delaney's radar years ago before they added Maryland and Rutgers. So yeah, this is very interesting. And I think the Big Ten, if they deem that Washington and Oregon financially don't make sense, you could look at three other teams. You could look at Virginia, North Carolina and Duke. I think the Big Ten would be extremely interested in those three teams if they determine Washington and uh, um, Oregon are not good enough in terms of the revenue they're going to bring to the league and the overall fan bases. Virginia fits in the, with the Big Ten so well. Their football pro program is lacking. Their basketball program is really good. They have amazing academics. And then North Carolina and Duke would be a home run for the Big Ten. An absolute home run due to the basketball rivalry. With or without Notre Dame, one industry source doubted there was any value for the v Big Ten in inviting Oregon and or Washington. That source went to went so far as to call the two schools tweeners, not big enough to justify the 80 to 100 million annual media rights fees, but clearly better than the other Pac-12 schools. Think of Oregon and Washington more attractive to the Big 12 if the Pac-12 doesn't stick together. Speaking of that, the stare down. Regardless of Notre Dame's decision, the next step in realignment may be a raid of the, the Big 12 or the Pac-12 by the other conference. So it's the Big 12 rating the Pac-12 or the Pac-12 rating the Big 12. And you wonder, would it even make financial sense for teams from the Big 12 to go to the Pac-12? There was an article yesterday, I made a video about it, Phil Knight with, um, you know, with Nike and Oregon. Apparently, Phil Knight knows people within, within ESPN. And if ESPN gave a nice media deal to the Pac-12 under the assumption they could lure 
the teams from the Big 12 to the Pac-12. That's how that would be done. Because really, what is the the um, what is the motivation if you're a team in the Big 12 to go to the Pac-12 right now? There's really not one. You would have to do some get some sort of big TV deal, possibly through ESPN with the Pac-12. And that would enable the Pac-12 to ha possibly poach some of the teams from the Big 12. Uh, one industry source said the Pac-12 without USC and UCLA and the Big 12 without Texas and Oklahoma compared to the Mountain West or AAC+. Plus, uh, I think it's a little bit better than those, but yeah, it's not good. It, it, it's, it's not good at all because you have Oregon and you have Washington. But other than that, it, it is a really lacking conference. Attempting to poach teams from the other league is the obvious answer to improving those labels and rights fees that go with them. A raid may not change the financial math much, but it would mean survival for one of the conference and potential uh, dissolution of the other. And then, of course, this is where the huge idea of the merge comes into. We've talked about possibly the Big 12 raiding the ace, the the Pac-12. Look at this option. There is an option that would assume joint extermination of both conferences, but assure stability for the survivors. This would be very appealing for the Oregon's of the world, who are clearly very good teams. They would clearly be in this league. Same thing with Washington. Same thing with Utah. Same thing with. You know, a team like Oklahoma State from the Big 12. Uh, get the top schools in the Big 12 and the Pac-12 to agree that forming a new, a new conference is in their best interest. So instead of these two conferences trying to basically eat each other, take the best teams from each of the conferences, let them join up, and form a relevant third super conference. That's the idea of this, and this is possibly what it would look like. You've got half of the teams, or some of the teams from the Big 12, some of the teams from the Pac-12. The West would be Arizona, Arizona State, Cal, Colorado, Oregon, Stanford, Utah, Washington, all Pac-12 teams, and then the Midwest would be Baylor, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, Oklahoma State, TCU, Texas Tech, and UCF, as these teams try and remain relevant in possibly the super conference era of college football, I think that's a very good division, a very good conference, especially with Oregon, Oklahoma State. Since he's been good, Houston's been good, UCF has been good, TCU is okay, or oh, oh, Utah has been good, Washington. Those are some really, really solid. Baylor, Baylor in basketball and football, BYU in football. This would be a great third super conference if you wanted to form, if you wanted to format the conference in a merge type way that ensures teams like Oregon are going to be relevant, teams like Washington are going to be relevant, teams that should be relevant will be relevant, and unfortunately, you know, the teams from the Big 12 that are currently in the, like Kansas, what happens to them and their basketball, like, that's the one thing. What happens to Kansas basketball if they're not involved in one of these three super conferences? It's just like, they're in a sub-conference now, and it's the same thing with like the Pac-12 schools, you know, we'll see what happens with like California, uh, you know, even Stanford, I don't know, will, would Stanford be able to join the Big Ten? I think if Stanford isn't able to join the Big Ten and the Pac-12 dissolves, I could see Stanford go, at, well, this has Stanford in the West. Maybe, Sta yeah, maybe Stanford would be part of this due to their academics. Um, so this is a very interesting idea, merging the Pac-12 and the Big 12 taking the best teams from each conference and forming a super conference that can stay relevant when you've got the Big Ten and the SEC. And of course, we're still waiting for Notre Dame to make a decision that will kind of get the ball rolling on more realignment possibilities. And I think the Big Ten right now is in a fine uh, situation. I don't think they need to 
try and do anything to lure Notre Dame. It's, Notre Dame's either going to join or they're not going to join. The Big Ten is, is such a superpower at this point. They are the Northern superpower. No, Notre Dame can either stay independent, they can join the SEC, or they can join the Big Ten, but the Big Ten doesn't have to, you know, do anything to entice Notre Dame. You either you can either join our conference. It makes sense geographically. Our team, the way your um, academics align, it aligns more with Big T Ten schools than SEC schools, obviously. Or you can stay independent or go to the SEC. It's Notre Dame's choice. It's Notre Dame's choice, and it is interesting. We're finding out that Oregon is not as desirable as it may look on the surface because on the surface it looks like Oregon's this up-and-coming team with a bunch of money but it seems like they don't make enough to make it justifiable at this point to join the Big Ten unless they take a pay cut and don't get the full amount in terms of the TV rights deal when they join the Big Ten. That's the problem right now with Oregon and Washington joining the Big Ten. And the Big Ten could look, if they add Notre Dame, they could look to the ACC and they could say, we want uh, that that amazing basketball rivalry, Duke, North Carolina, great academics, and Virginia, another great academic school that would fit in perfectly in the Big Ten. So those are interesting situations. This is going to continue to evolve Guys, happy 4th of July. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.